Hi, I'm Ross. I'm, this is my cohort, Vincent. We're from Huawei. You probably heard of Huawei. It's a little small company based in China. Um, we've been working on uh, WebRTC, and we are basically a, a, a vendor to the carriers. So we're uh, talking today about uh, an infrastructure, a platform, which is really boring. Um, so what we're trying to do is show you some of the, or one of the applications that was built on top of the infrastructure and is currently being deployed uh, in some other carriers around the world. Um, it's a healthcare application. It uh, uses WebRTC, but it uses machine-to-machine uh, -machine protocols and other things as well. It's fully integrated with the IMS infrastructure. And I'll show you here and just as the, uh, the setup for it goes, what the infrastructure is, the boring stuff. Um, we've got on the south side of the, um, uh, the overall infrastructure, we've got uh, WebRTC and WebRTC gateways. Uh, we've also got a native uh, uh, client RTC development uh, environment, uh, so you can create your own applications for the likes of doorbells and, and um, uh, other types of machines that don't necessarily need a browser. Uh, we've got the, the northbound interface uh, from an API, an API, uh, open API infrastructure, and API management infrastructure. And uh, through this infrastructure, we've integrated with the IMS core and the capabilities and uh, provide a, a, a fairly rich environment for our carriers to uh, develop third-party applications and roll them out into their particular industries. Uh, further, we provide a, uh, a degree of uh, consulting and support, uh, SDK, developer workshops, uh, operational services, uh, installation, etc. Um, one of the key things that I'm going to hammer on throughout this is that we're very big on the, the machine side of things and the ability to interleave real-time communications with other forms of services and capabilities. From a, from a demo setup point of view, uh, what we're, we've got here implemented is, is basically the, the medical application that's running on an application server. We've got a machine-to-machine -machine interface that uh, is uh, talking a, a finger probe that talks to a cell phone, that talks to a machine. Um, uh, M2M server, which talks eventually to the medical applications. We've got a database server that uh, provides uh, client uh, information. Uh, we've got a number of devices, the doctor, the, um, uh, a second doctor. Uh, we've got a patient, uh, in this case on a browser-based uh, WebRTC infrastructure. We've built a WebRTC gateway, and uh, we're actually uh, running this through an IMS infrastructure that is currently operational in China. Uh, so it's a, it's a global type of endeavor. Uh, fairly straightforward. Um, we'll get into the demonstration. So I'm the patient. My friend Vincent here is the doctor. Uh, you can see on the doctor's screen over there that he's He's currently not doing anything, as all doctors usually do when they don't have patients. Um, I'm the patient, and I'm sitting there monitoring whatever I want to do. And uh, through the machine-to-machine -machine interface, I can uh, check my uh, pulse rate, my blood oxygen. It takes a few minutes to, uh, to come through, but uh, um, eventually I will be able to see this on my screen. The, um, so all of my information about my health care and the services that my doctor is providing and uh, uh, my uh, uh, reservation system, my orders, um, et cetera, are all available on a screen that I could see in a real-time environment uh, on the monitor um, uh, as I'm going through the process. So the, all of this you don't need WebRTC for. Uh, the portion of WebRTC the real-time communications comes into it when I actually want to call a doctor, a real person, on the other end. And once I let Chrome allow it, hopefully the doctor answers. He's available. He can see where I am. He can see um, what I'm doing. 
and uh, theoretically he should be able to see also the the uh, the same information that I'm seeing as far as uh, pulse rate. Vincent, you're getting very nervous here. So pulse rate, uh, oxygen level, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the the whole idea of WebRTC, and I think where it fits very well with the overall communications infrastructure, is to be able to embed real-time communications into the context of what you're doing on the screen and what you're doing in, um, in real life. So we found this very easy to, um, to implement. Uh, of course, we didn't implement it, so it was easier for us. But uh, on the infrastructure, it was fairly straightforward to do it. Uh, using the IMS core infrastructure, again, you can, you can add on things like uh, Vincent, the doctor here, can can easily conference in a, a, um, another doctor if they want to, to have a, uh, a three-way consult. Um, so if you can do that. And if things actually work. The third doctor is actually on a cell phone. So through the IMS core infrastructure, it's relatively easy to interconnect all sorts of different types of devices in different areas all around the world. So, Brittany Smith, demos, you know. Anyway, um, I promise you it does work, and it was uh, relatively easy. There's, um, uh, we've got this uh, commercial service. There's actually hundreds of these types of apps that have been built uh, for the carrier on top of the infrastructure. Not all of them WebRTC. Not all of them needing the IMS uh, infrastructure, uh, but an awful lot of them are are um, uh, interleaving the uh, the machine-to-machine -machine types of capabilities with real-time communications and and uh, all of the other uh, infrastructure within the web environment. Uh, you can see, Brittany has now showed up on the cell phone. So, uh, what you see in the in the patient side. Uh, you can see the doctor, the consulting doctor. Uh, the doctor also uh, has the, uh, the similar uh, types of capabilities. Right? So we're sharing all of the information in real time. So um, that's the end of the demo. Uh, there's, there's other things that you can do. Uh, from the doctor's point of view, you can uh, use WebRTC to, to, uh, to whiteboard. Uh, if they want to, to uh, if the doctor wants to draw a picture of your kidneys or whatever else, then he can uh, do that on his screen and he can share it through WebRTC to, uh, to the patient's screen. He can send you a prescription uh, through the, the data channel. Um, he can um, uh, set up uh, um, um, the, the monitoring capabilities and scheduling and everything else. So, a fairly sophisticated uh, application which uh, uses a fairly simple WebRTC gateway and the IMS core infrastructure to good effect. So, I'll go back to this for a while, um, given that uh, we didn't use up all of the, uh, the 10 minutes. Uh, we, like I was saying, we've, uh, on this infrastructure, we've deployed um, uh, probably a couple of hundred services at the moment that are, that are various form factors and use different technology, and some of them integrated with IMS. Uh, some of them don't need IMS. Uh, some of them are fully integrated with machine-to-machine. Uh, -machine. Some of them don't need it. Uh, things like anywhere from an intelligent doorbell with a RTC engine embedded in it that whenever you ring the doorbell, it actually dials up your cell phone and you do a voice video call with your doorbell and you, you uh, either um, uh, uh, find out it's a burglar or it's the FedEx uh, person that has uh, come to deliver your package. And you can um, hold up your, um, your uh, uh, sign for the, uh, the package. Um, there's a number of video surveillance capabilities uh, with the, the RTC embedded uh, engine with, embedded within uh, wireless cameras and, um, 
even to the extent of using facial recognition so that you can use um, uh, recognition in that. And, and again, the, the key element of this is using the WebRTC or the RTC uh, in general as part of the overall service and not the service itself. So I think we'll close there and move on to the next demo. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.